All right, hello everybody. Welcome to my competition masterclass, part one. This is gonna be everything you need to know about how to run a competition from administrative stuff to technical stuff happening. Now, we're gonna talk about administrative stuff now, so we've all need uh, technical stuff and the next time I can present, which will have to be probably spring semester, unfortunately, for all of you. So there will be a quiz at the end. I'm gonna ask you what you learned so you better all be paying attention. If you're not paying attention, I'll be very sad. Um, so let's get started. So this is table of contents. Uh, I want to talk about what a secure competition is. I'm gonna go over like timelines and my, like how we plan out everything from like four months to like two weeks after a competition. Then we're also gonna talk about how you build a black team to be successful, and then how you team a competition, and just about everything in between. That's all all the stuff that's not technical about running a competition. So let's get into it. So what is a secured competition? There's several common types. There are CTFs, capture the flags. There are king of the hill competitions. You might even have a penetration competition, um, penetration testing competition, like CPTC. Or you might have a blue team versus red team competition, like I said, like you do lockdown. Capture the flags are generally, uh, you have a little competition over a variety of security disciplines. So like instant response, forensic signals. Uh, we have the RITSEC CTF which if you want to run, the, uh, the form is open for you to apply, to a plug. Um, and you can have competitions where you have plenty of teams all across the, the globe. I think for our last RITSEC CTF, we had a little bit over 2,000 teams um, that came and competed all remotely. And here's a couple of common ones. You got DEF CON CTF, you got Meta, you got Pico, Plaid, Akasat, all these fun competitions. You got Team Education, does them all the time. So those are CTFs. Uh, King of the Hill competitions is an attack and defend. So you're trying to capture a hill and then defend it. You know, a hill is like some sort it's like a box that has some vulnerabilities in it. And you want to like once you pwn the box, you're like exporting said vulnerability, you want to then lock it down so everybody else can get in. And generally points are awarded for uh, over how many boxes you have ownership of. And if the services of the boxes should be scoring are up. Um Def Con CTF sometimes has a King of the Hill aspect to it. ISTS does. And those are the only two that I can think of at the moment. So, pen testing competitions are like CPTC. Uh, there might be a RVAP pen testing competition this spring. Uh, basically, you're trying to see like how well you can do penetration testing and vulnerability assessment on like a defined network. Mm -hmm. So, if you're interested about doing that, go to RVAP, talk to Smash, it would be wonderful. So, what we're talking about today, red versus blue competitions. Um, and generally, these are pure defense competitions. So, how well are you? How good are you at like being a blue teamer? How good are you at threat hunting, like securing the box, hardening, like running uh, different tools to detect red team or like some adversary? And like, can you do all of this stuff? And it's kind of kind of a lot of fun. It's what we do a lot. We got UB lockdown. We got CCDC that does this. We have ISTS and IRSEC, and it's the, it's the main theme of competitions like this at the collegiate level. This slide is empty. Oh, there's, there's little things. Um, you can tell that I put a lot of effort into this. So, in the real world, we're going to pull the leg, we're going to pull the cover back on what competitions do at the moment. Um, in, the, in the real world, a company gets breached, um, adversary activity still active in the environment. So, you'll have like a, like some APT. Is still like exfiling data in the boxes that they breached and trying to attack. Uh, and like you're an outside company, you get contracts to come in and remediate the vulnerabilities and then support key services and get like all the business operations back online, but more so, but this time secure. So to translate this into competitions, which is what we do for blue team competitions, a scored service is a business critical service. So say like our company, say the theme is like a store and you have like an HTTP check, that's like your storefront. So say like your Walmart, your main page goes down, you can't sell things online, which is pretty bad. Um, if you have an inject, this is like a business administrative ob objective. So say like the C-suite of Walmart wants to know what is happening. They're gonna ask you for a report. And that report is translated into an inject for the competition. And threat hunting, the threat hunting in real life. So 
there's not really much translation there. We're trying to figure out what Red Team did, trying to remediate any holders that they used to get in, and then trying to like basically kick them out, but also take note of what they did so you can write a good report at the end. So that is what a blueprint competition is and like how we define that and what we do here at Rizek. Um, so in order to make this happen, there's a lot of planning and a lot of stuff that goes into it. Um, for IRSEC specifically, we started planning back at the end of July. And we started putting together a team, started coming up with a methodology, and started getting some ideas on the board, and some stuff written down so that we could make all this stuff happen on, uh, on November 5th. So, so that's, yeah, that's four months, basically. So in order to make all this stuff happen, you gotta start early. About four months before the competition, you wanna determine who your black team leads are, you want to begin taking out like a theme, trying to come up with some central idea that you're going to base everything around. Um, you're going to pick, pick some dates for your competition, and then you're going to start getting some uh, some ideas for what's going to be in your like infrastructure. About three months before the competition, you're going to finalize like your black team. You're going to like pick people. You're going to follow your leads. You're going to like pick your theme. You have that like finished. You'll start working on a logo using an outside company. Um, you're gonna like finalize your dates, you can book your rooms, start working on images, and start working on just like general black team development. About two months before, you wanna have like a good testing environment provisioned. Um, your images should be done, tested, and ready to go. Then you start working on Ant Terraform and Ansible, and you can finish your logo up, get some uh, like blue team signups out, order your shirts, all this good stuff. So, a little bit more in depth here. Your black team leads. Leads are the foundation. They, they are the foundation of your competition. If you have bad leads, you're gonna have a bad competition. Um, if they're not like technically strong, if they're not like good at communication, not dependable people, then they're gonna tell you that like your leads meeting, everything's fine, everything is not fine. And trust me, if things aren't fine, that's a problem. There's been a couple of instances where things were not fine. I remember realized that things weren't fine until like the week before the competition, and that was pretty terrible. So having the leads is the foundation of your black team. Um, then the team brainstorm will come back to the theme at the end of the end of this presentation. But basically, it's themes are what makes IRSEC a lot of fun and what makes things like CCDC really boring. So uh, having a good theme is like how we bring fun into a competition and make like this whole thing actually enjoyable to do instead of just like staring at your computer, like being upset that you're just like a code monkey going through like some terrible scored service. Like imagine this. Instead of score stack, you had a scoring engine built in nineteen ninety nine. And it looks like it was built in nineteen eighty. And it's terrible. That would be a pretty terrible competition. Imagine this, you want to change your passwords in the scoring engine. You have to tell a white team they're going to take about two trips to the coffee shop before they update your password. And then it's going to be wrong because they've made a typo. This is stuff that happens in CCDC all the time. Um, but back to the theme. Like some, some little storytelling elements is like who's your blue team, who's your red team, is the red team the good guys, bad guys, is the blue team the good guys, the bad guys. Um, ISTS 2020, we had. The FBI, the actual FBI, but like the red team FBI. And we had a bunch of blue teams who were APTs. And so it was a little, little reverse on like the usual story where the red team's the bad guys, the blue team's the good guys. And the, the FBI was counter hacking the APTs. Um, and a little, little, little fun thing about that um, it was like a real, real flip of the script. Just made it really interesting. Um, for IRSEC, the blue teams were eco warriors or eco terrorists, and the they were supposed to be the good guys because the bad guys were big oil companies. Um, how you tell your theme is up to you. But that's how you really make a right competition. So, and then then dates, fine two dates is like pretty critical because this room is insanely popular. The fact that we have this room every Friday isn't uh, for like that's not like a guarantee all the time. So the fact that we're able to do this stuff in here, it's amazing. Um, 
I think, like the building, like this room gets rented out for like close to several hundred thousand dollars per hour, I think. <laughs> I should be. Oh, oh, okay. Move, move the commas and the decimal points a little bit. Well, you know, that's the question for the department. Anyways, anyways, um, for the fall semester, we generally try to run a competition right on the end of October, starting November. For the spring semester, we take the day right after the spring career fair. Um, last year, we tried to do the fall competition right after the career fair. If you guys remember, the career fair happened in September, and the competition was started in October, which means that we lost like a month of dev time, and that was terrible. So we pushed it out, and it was a lot better this time around. And so yeah, that's when we picked the dates, it was beautiful. Um, about three months before the competition, you need to have your black team formation started. Um, in the past, the black team was kind of picked by the CA, and it was like, who do you, who does the CA know? So if you weren't like tight with people who were already in the black team, you probably weren't gonna get the black team, which is pretty gross. Uh, and now we have a black team interest form, and anybody can apply and like shoot their shot basically on black team, and it's a lot better, a lot more inviting. We love to see that. Um, and we we start like finalizing our theme, start working with a third party company to work on a logo. Um, currently, our company is Miscreants, which is which is founded and currently ran by an RT, uh, an RT Sec alum from Sean Stein, who's amazing, doing amazing things. Um, we have we have to finalize our dates and book our rooms, and like guarantee that all the rooms that we booked are still available. There have been some scares where the department is like, "Oh, actually, we're gonna take this room on this weekend. Uh, good luck." And we've had to like scramble and figure out how we're gonna adapt around that, but we make it work. Uh, and then also a few months before, you gotta select your images. So more on this, the next time we talk about technical stuff for Black Team, but you need images for Windows, for your router, and your Linux boxes, and any other weird things you want to have in your topology. About two months before the competition, you have to have your testing environment provisions. Um, this year, the league and Smash set up a whole project on the stack where we set a bunch of boxes up for teleport and people were able to use that to test their Ansible while I finished up the Terraform and it was excellent. So I used to get provisions set up then we can start working on Terraform Ansible. The logo's gotta be finalized by about two months before so you can order stickers, you can order merchandise, you can order shirts. Um, you gotta get your Legion and White Team signups out so you can know who's gonna be competing Who's going to be helping out? That who's going to be helping set up the competition? Uh, and you also order your merch and all this good stuff. Um, also, about four months before the competition, and this will cover this more on the technical side of things. Um, you got to understand if you want any like physical infrastructure, like a Raspberry Pi, special camera, that needs to get ordered pretty far in advance so that the black team has time to understand how it works, get it set up and not have a critical mess the night before. A um, little example, uh, this past ISTS, we had WISE cameras that get connectivity from DHCP, which is wonderful if you have a thing to offer DHCP users. We did not have that thing, and we found that out the night before the competition. So we scrambled, we found some Mango routers, and we were able to like, pass traffic through that to make it all work. But that was just kind of a kind of a big deal. So this is why we want to get things ordered well in advance so we have plenty of time to figure out issues, figure out any things we gotta fix or adapt around. Uh, just two months. So about one month before the competition, you've now spent about two months in your dev cycle. So at this point, if anything's had to if anything's had to be changed in the topology, like score checks. Um, services or any other like instances that just aren't going to work, then this is the time we have to make that call and change the plan, like for sure. So at this point, we got to be spinning up the competition infrastructure so that we might like, test Ansible against the real stuff that's going to all the users are going to be using. So Terraform has to be kind of done by this point, and we did have that. It was wonderful. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> just a little bit. 
Um, and we can do, you use Ansible for testing. Um, and at this point, the, like the more technical parts of the theme, so your users, your host names, your domain name, all got to be finalized so we can have that set in Ansible and in Terraform. And then pick up switches. So again, this is something that we'll talk about the technical side of things. But uh, we rent about $140,000 for the switches from ITS every competition cycle. And we got to pick them up, transport them to the club room, make sure that they're not going to be destroyed. Because I don't know about you, but I don't have $140,000 just lying around. So uh, that's, that's a pretty important part of how we network everything in the stack. Uh, about three weeks before, um, we want to make sure you, Ansible is like finished and ready to go, polished, good documentation. Everything is uh, like I'm potent, not going to break if some like some weird thing happened. Um, also, at this point, like you should know if like all the Linux boxes have sudo on them and installed the right way. Um, little hint: they didn't about a week before IRSec, and Matt had to write like five different sudo files, which was uh, quite the fun time for him. Yeah. Yep, tons of fun. Um, and about three weeks before, we do a little test deploy. So we got all the boxes together. We'll make sure we have a clean deploy of all 16 teams. We'll run Ansible um, on all of them and see if we can green board one team. Um, swag should be arriving. Physical devices should be in. And you can make it, they can be configured. About two weeks before the competition, we're going to do the final deploy. And so we'll talk about all of that in a little bit more detail. So four weeks before, you're going to have uh, your competition infrastructure spun up. So this time around, we deployed five teams. Uh, team one, team two, kind of like our control teams. And then we had teams three, four, and five for testing. So Windows took a team, like took one team. Linux had a team, a log had another team. So they could test independently about all the other things that were going on. So they have like clean stuff that only they changed. Um, we built our playbooks and had, had ran those playbooks against all the teams. Um, all the team stuff, like user stuff teams were all finished. Um, and then the blue teams uh, were all created through the sign-up form. There's a couple of people on standby to fill in, a couple of active teams in case too many drop out. And the switches, we got them from IT, uh, ITS. So this is kind of where we stood about four weeks before. You gotta say hi, Julie. <laughs> About three weeks before the competition, all the Ansible should be done. So now we can do our test deploy. More often than not, test deploys don't go too well because people realize that something kind of closes the cracks. Um, this time around for IRSEC, it actually went pretty well. We had, I think every, I think we had about half the checks up and we had like one thing to do with the other half the checks um, during our test deploy, which is really sweet. Um, yeah, you've got your you've got your swag coming in, you've got your switches, and all the devices, they got, got to get configured. Two weeks before the competition, um, you redeploy all 16 teams, and you run Ansible on all the teams, you got a green board, every single one of the teams, and once that's all set, you can snapshot each team, so that way when red team gets to deploy, when they mess something up, they can just revert to the black team snapshot, instead of having to redeploy we're using Terraform and then running on Windows and then all of Linux Ansible. Um, we timed it out. To do a full redeploy from like nothing would have taken roughly like 15 hours, um, which is crazy. Taking about like two or three hours to run all the Terraform because provisioning 150, 100, like 200 instances on the stack all at once can go over too well. Um, so that's gonna take some time. Then to run all the Windows Ansible to just set up the AD, nothing else, takes about three hours. Because um, that Ansible playbook is pretty long, and even though you can like multi-thread Ansible, you can run it concurrently on all 16 teams at the same time, so it takes a while. So setting up the AD takes a long time, setting up all the other services takes a long time. So that's why we do our redeploy about two weeks before, so we have that flex time. We take our snapshots so that we can spend like Five, 10 minutes reverting all things, all 16 teams instead of 10 hours, 15 hours. After our final deploy is good, 
after everything is all mostly like green board and fire team, including physical devices by setting up a test team in this room. We pass off to deploy the red team. Um, we also have like a white team meeting, so that's why your white teamers know what's going to happen and they're ready to go. And we're about at this point, if we've accomplished all of these things, we're going to have a really smooth like final two weeks. We don't do those things, and it's gonna be a bit, bit of a mess. So, about one week before your red team is gonna deploy, um, we the red team got access to the access infrastructure on Monday, um, and because of some technical difficulties, we finished our deploy about uh, Saturday at uh, nine thirty. Um, we were gonna try to take a red team snapshot, but things went a bit too slow to make that happen, so we didn't get one in. But this is like best possible thing. So you do a writing snapshot Wednesday, Thursday. Um, all your swag should be in here. If anything that's not in here, then you kind of got a problem. Um, the day before the competition is at the comp room, do the last couple of checking on teams. When you go to sleep, you wake up, it's competition time, it's easy. Um, they had the comp, made it, talk about that anymore. So the week before the competition, uh, you need, to, um, the red team will do their deploy, they'll get access to your VPN or teleport or some other mechanism for accessing all the infrastructure. Um, you have a test team, it's Team 16, ask them not to break anything, which sometimes happens. Um, me and Matt have never broke anything, ever. Never. Not even once. No, there's no, no MTV issue on the right team side. Nope. Nope. So, uh, we, we do have a reverse shift called flashback uh, that works really well. Um, if you've ever seen in action, it's like the best way to see whoever. And uh, it's a shut of all the pieces, which Red Boy does. It's beautiful. Malik's not here to for, for him to hear his praise, so every time I mess that up. Um, yeah, we have all the swag in. The swag's not in. It could be located across the campus in like the warehouse that FMS uses, um, or it could just like be hanging around somewhere. So if you don't have like all your swag in at this point, you need to make a backup plan about how you're gonna get stuff that you need. So it could be going to Walmart, could be going to Party City. Um, ICS 2020, there was like five or six blue team shirts that like just didn't show up. And so uh, Amanda Brown, the treasurer at the time, and Shannon went to the mall and found like a t-shirt printer that's like in the middle of the mall and like flash printed like 15, I think 10 shirts. Um, and you couldn't really tell, it was great. So this is why we have backup plants, right? Um, then when our team's done, you snapshot again and you're off and away. Then the day before the competition is where everything kind of went, kind of went sideways. Um, this this uh, this semester, um, but this is how it would go if everything was going to go perfectly. So about noon, we'd get access to this room. We'd start moving all the tables into the arrangement. We'd bring in the couches. We'd pull out all the tables, monitors, computers, keyboards, mice, everything we need to set up this room to have seventy-five competitors in it. Uh, the next day, we pull it all out, we distribute all that stuff, we plug it all in, get it all set up, all working, we test it all, we put up decorations, we make this room look beautiful, um, we put department tablecloths over a section of wall over there, just like, it looks beautiful. Does time kind of work for either AM or PM? This is uh, PM. It works for AM as well. Well, hopefully this isn't the AM. Yeah. Um, sometimes it is the AM, such a like ISTS. Um, I think it was Tenchi, Allison, and I. We were in here at like four or five in the morning, just setting up Windows IoT devices, and that was so much fun. And then about six AM, Tenchi, I took a little nap in the cyber range. Woke up around like 8.30 with like three missed calls from Jake because I was supposed to pick him up at 8. And uh, a bunch of red team was just like, I guess this guy's taking a nap right here. It was a wonderful time. Um, and but yeah, hopefully 
really around six o'clock, we've got this this whole room set up because um, white teamers do get tired, but not like a uh, universally powered workhorse, unfortunately, because they're people. So um, I think for our set, we were closed out of this room around midnight with all the decorations, all the all the physical stuff was set up. We had the Raspberry Pis had to get like kind of reconfigured a little bit uh, on Friday. But aside from that, things were pretty pretty chill from like the this the physical setup side of things. And I'll talk about the wonderful that happened on the technical side of things next time I talk. Because that was a, it's a mess. Well we solved all the problems. Um, and uh, at the end of the day you go home and sleep. Uh, this I uh, said, I think the only, yeah, nobody didn't sleep, which is beautiful. And I think I was one of the few who only got three hours. So at least most people were getting enough sleep to not be like a zombie the day they come home. Yeah, a little nap. Um, so, yeah. Kind of the same thing that I just said, but it's all, all the same information. If, if your day before goes really smooth, you're going to have a great comp. If it doesn't go really smooth, it's going to be a little bit a little late on the start, but it'll all be okay. Um, so this is this is the day of timeline right here. It's about 6, 7 in the morning, Blackman's going to arrive. Um, I think me, Jake, and Nolan were all here before 7 a.m. for our IR set. Um, some other people were also there. But I know, I know, like me, Jake, and all, all left at like six thirty, which is great. I went out and got burgers, which is beautiful. Black team gets burgers. Red team does not get burgers. Um, Seven a.m. Red team. White team is going to arrive. Eight eight a.m. Blue team is going to arrive. Nine a.m. Any last minute speeches, hands on keyboard stuff is going to start. Um, you're going to have lunch around noon. Get hands on keyboard again at one. Um, Four or five p.m. Get your hands off keyboard. A few closing remarks. Clean up, and then go out and celebrate. Um, so some some tips to have a good day of competition experience. So communication is really important. We got two bustling rooms. This room is hyper range, and if communication kind of falls out of those two rooms, things are kind of go sideways. A little example: the Raspberry Pis um, ate crap at like the start of the competition, and they were taken out of scope. And that was not, uh, I had me and Matt didn't learn about that one until we about to want to break all the raspberry pies. I was like, okay, let's do a break. And Malik was like, wait a minute, what are you gonna do? So communication is really important and if it falls apart, we're gonna go sideways. Uh, being patient is also pretty critical to having a good time. Um, everybody put in all the effort to make this thing happen, whether it started four months ago or started two weeks ago. Um, everybody wanted to be here and have a good time. So sometimes people haven't slept, means that it would be a little trendy. It's like be patient and we're gonna have a great time. Um, think things through. So a little story, uh, one of my fuck ups. Um, last ISTS, we discovered the Thursday before that there was an issue with the Linux images where they had too much swap space. That was just like eating through all the disk space. And we had to provision new images and get them up and running very quickly. This is only an issue for the teams and wasn't an issue for management. But they're using the same instance. They're using the same images. And so when I went through to, like, we deleted that image and then we built a new one, called it the same thing. But Terraform got upset. And I, like, deleted every, like, when I went to make the change to Terraform, I also deleted everything in management instead of everything just in the teams. So if I had thought through what was happening and actually read what the Terraform was going to do, instead of just like saying, oh, it's going to be fine, like everything would have been a lot better. But instead, I deleted management, and we lost the scoring, lost uh, the store, lost a bunch of other things that were pretty important. And that was a peak depression moment. So yeah, like in the, in the crunch time of everything, make sure that you think everything through so that way you know what you're going to do you don't make big mistakes. Uh, you don't want to accidentally torch all your infrastructure just because you're in a rush. Uh, make sure you eat food and drink water. Um, have to take care of yourself. You need a nap, take a nap. 
Um, if like you are not well nourished in your soul, you're gonna be very irritable to be around. And blue dreamers are gonna be like, hey, this thing's wrong. You snap at them. That's gonna be pretty rude and kind of like ruin their experience. As Mav has said um, to me, when blue dreamers have a question and black team like didn't do a good job, and, like they're all like really sleep deprived. Or like you have a little bit like okay, I got a question. And some like black team just like shuffle over like a zombie. It's like, have you tried restarting your box and not give like any actual good advice? Um, so you kind of need to make sure that you're, like, you're prepared to have a good time and be able to actually be useful in a competition instead of just like being black team zombie. Um, and you're flexible. So sometimes things go sideways. Like the pies went sideways at IRC. You just have to adapt to that instead of like letting it throw you off the rest of it. And the last piece of advice is have fun. Uh, you spend a lot of time putting in a lot of work to make this thing happen. You just come in here and you sit down on the couch and you kind of watch everybody and really like enjoying your experience. It's gonna, you're gonna like feel like, wow, I, I enabled this to happen. This was pretty positive. So even though things could be going sideways somewhere else, just make sure that you take some time to enjoy the experience as well. The post-competition timeline. So after everything's done, which is like pretty impressive that everything went off and like happened, um, we gotta clean up the copper and cyber range, we gotta clean up the stack. Malik wasn't uh, too happy that there was like 17 PFS images floating around the stack and about like seven different extraneous snapshots or all the boxes. So we gotta clean up everything that we set up, make sure that this room is usable. Um, Actually, the, the Monday after the competition, like the board of trustees was in here all week. So this room had to be pretty impeccable um, if they were here. So we're also gonna do a little debrief and we're talking about like what worked, didn't work, what things we need to improve upon, or like the big takeaways, the big lessons learned. Um, we can look forward about doing a public release and following up with sponsors, making sure that everybody kind of had a good time release like the blue team feedback form, like the feedback form, the input on red team, all this wonderful stuff. So with the debrief, this is like pretty important things that gotta happen here. The development of the competition takes a long time and having a good like having a good process is how we enable the uh, do competitions. And so at the end of the competition you need to review the process and make sure that like everything that we defined in that process kind of went well. So we talked about like everything from starting out with the planning to the day of the competition, make sure that everything was like really smooth. So you gotta you have to now, like, analyze what went wrong, what went well, what things were like, mediocre that we can improve upon. Just kind of figure out maybe like some critical analysis here, critical thinking, and just kind of make things better. So. By doing a good debrief, we can make sure that we're always improving for the future, which is what we want. Uh, about two weeks after the competition, uh, we'll do clean up the stack. I think me and Malik sat down Monday, Tuesday, and we'll clean up the stack. And he was really happy that his stack was no longer crying. Um, follow up with the sponsors, make sure that they got the resumes, everything that they paid for. Um, do a public release where all the code that we use to run the competition gets published and like publicly released. Um, so kind of merge everything in the main, make sure that everything is like good to go. And then make sure that treasurer the department got all the budgets and like all the receipts and everything like that. So like everything is clean. And that's kind of like all the timeline for the competition. So we'll talk a little bit about how you build a good black team, kind of like some things, you know, character traits that we look for, and also just like some tips to having a successful black team. So with the black team leads, these are the people that are responsible for everything happening within their discipline of security. So we'll go over all the leads in the in like in the next slide. But everybody who is that lead needs to is the fall person for that stuff getting done. Um, so they have to be technically strong, they need to be competent enough to do that and do it in a timely manner. 
We need to be good at communicating, telling what's, tell, being able to tell all the other leads in the CA what's happening and doing so uh, honestly. Uh, if there's communication breakdown because somebody says like, this thing is fine, it's not fine, that's like a big issue. So having good communication is critical with having a good competition. That's having a good team as well. Uh, hopefully, this isn't like a big requirement, but having a good leader and having a good teacher in your black team lead is is important. It's not the end of the world if they're not. Um, we do try to do some mentor like mentorship and teaching with like the black team members, black team junior program, so that you can like pass on knowledge and train some other people to come and take that lead position in the future. Another good trait is good good at problem solving. Um, we have a little MTU issue with a lot of the Linux boxes on the stack this time around. And that was a really weird problem where we could we could ping Google, but we couldn't curl example.com. So we had network connectivity, but somewhere along the way, like TCP traffic was getting dropped. And it took a couple hours of analysis between Malik, Omar, Smash, and I to figure out what the issue was. And we finally figured it out with some creative problem solving. So um, being able to think of creative solutions without trying to check the basic stuff is pretty important. Um, another another thing that happened was all the PFNS images, we had to statically set the internal IP address. And so when we deployed all the, all the teams the first time, um, we didn't, at least I didn't go back and set all those IP addresses. So when people went to run their Ansible, they're like, why can't I ping the LAN? And the reason was because the fact didn't get past and something hit to have a long IP address. But Team 6 Word is the one that we use as the base image, which is kind of funky. So you have to remember to check the basic stuff, also be able to think creatively, and solve problems that arise. And lastly, they gotta be dependable. If this person is really flaky, then the work that they were supposed to do has to get off to somebody else. And usually that person is the CA, and they already have enough, they already have enough other stuff to take care of. So Having that happen is pretty bad. Um, ISTS 2021, um, the CTF lead just disappeared that semester. And so that work had to, it got dropped on Dan, he's able to delegate it off to somebody else. But if that didn't happen because the lead dropped, it would have been work for him. So having the more people is pretty important to having a good black team, and like black team leads. So these are all the lead positions that we have currently. Uh, and, but it's not to say that like these are the only positions that we need to have. These can change depending on the situation. Like these are the ones that we had for IRSEC, but for ISTS we have a different set of like, things that we do in competition. We're gonna have a different set of weeds. So whatever like big items are happening in a competition, probably want to lead for that thing. And so this is this is how we run. Um, the one lead that's not defined by the CA is the ops lead, and it's probably nice to loop them in. I think Malik would be a bit upset if we put a competition on a stack and you didn't know about it. That'd be kind of funny though. Um, with your black team, these are people who are going to sit underneath the leads. Um, most of the time, you want a team of like one to three people. Um, if there's a lot of work to do, you can have more. But the important thing here is to have meaningful work for everybody. Um, if I asked, say Matt was on my team, I asked him to change one host name, like I asked him to change one line of Terraform, do nothing else, I'd be a waste of his time, and I'd be pretty pretty mean of me to do that to him. So when you're a lead, you wanna make sure that the people on your team are all doing meaningful things that they, that they can learn and they can actively like grow their skills and you're not like being rude. Because they want to become a lot to learn and to be like an active participant here. So be respectful of that and like make them feel included, all that good stuff. Um, you wanna have concrete deliverables for them so that they can do like, like concrete progress every time. Instead of giving like, them like a vague description of what you want them to do, like saying, oh, can you spin up like Waza? It's, it's a pretty, pretty vague statement right there. Uh, something more specific is like, okay, can you install like the Waza server on this box and then install a listener slash a forwarder this other box and like do part one and then part two, like really help them break down the like the big task and the more manageable things. 
and you want to have good trust and good communication with your team. That way, like nobody feels like alienated or doesn't really know, doesn't feel comfortable saying, "Oh, I don't know how to do this thing." I can ask you for help and all this good stuff. So, for kind of character traits, as long like if the black team, black team should be excited to learn, um, have some technical background. Um, if Generally speaking, if somebody can't run SSH, that might be a bit of an issue. But that's not to say that you can't like still apply or like learn these skills. Um, they should have some good troubleshooting and brainstorming skills so they can kind of solve problems um, or adapt to things that are going wrong. Um, also, hopefully having some background in the discipline. Like if you asked me to do Windows stuff, I would be pretty useless. I don't, know, I don't know about nothing in Windows. I could do background. That's about it. Um, versus like Kenny or Dom, if you ask them to do Windows stuff, they'd be like, oh, I'll sort them out. So like, having some background knowledge in that area is a pretty good prerequisite. And also just how, like, being good at communicating, being dependable. Yeah, if you flake on a team, it's pretty, pretty sad. And it's also just like more work to lead that's trying to delegate and teach. So. Yeah, it's black and traits. So some successful black teams are gonna have good communication. We're gonna be open and transparent. We're gonna have a good discipline to stick to the timeline. We're also gonna be able to document all the issues that they come up with, like all the issues that happen and their solutions, so that if it happens in the future, it's documented somewhere. Um, having good communication, I said it a lot of times already, but that's the foundation of everything that's gonna be good on the team. So the leads need to know what's happening with other teams. The CA needs to know what's happening overall. Um, and like taking the time to explain the problem and the solution to everybody so we're on the same page is like pretty critical. Um, maybe somebody has a new idea, if you take the time to bring them up to speed, they might be able to contribute and like find the solution pretty well. All right, good stuff. So um, any questions about this? Beautiful. All right, theming more fun stuff and less leadership stuff. So what is a theme? It's the thing that makes IRSEC fun, CCDC. Well, CCDC. So this is essentially the thing's gonna revolve around. Um, you have, like, you kind of push the theme in a lot of different ways. You have your host names and your users, you have your declarations and your injects and inject templates. You have who the blue team is, like who they represent. You have your red team and who they represent. Um, you have score checks and you have like a game at ISTS. All this stuff to really not sell this theme. So if you do the theme well, everyone's going to be like, wow, that was really cool. That was a lot of fun. If you do it really badly, well, it's just as easy. So with technical theming, this is like all the stuff that we can do and implement on the actual infrastructure. So all the host names are relevant to the theme. Um, we have a domain name that's also like relevant to the theme. So the domain name was sealed at AQ, where AQ is the TLD for Antarctica. Um, and SEAL stood for Southern Energy Allegiance, sorry, Assurance League, pretty sure. So like, there's a big conglomerate of all the old companies that came together to form SEAL, uh, where that was, that's, that's, kind of, that's where the domain name came from. Um, the box, the host names were animals, last IRSEC, all the theme was Greek, kind of like mythology. So all the host names had, um, they were the names of Greek cities. And the users kind of helped push the theme. So there's like rig manager was somebody that would work on an oil rig. Um, there's driller, floor hand, and some other things that were like actually relevant to like drilling and pumping for oil. Uh, all the score checks also have to be relevant to the theme. So you can put, like you make a web page. If you have a store, you have like some items in the store that is, like that's what the score check checks. Or you have like, if you're hosting, if you score on a file share, like SMB or FTP, you can put like fun file in the file share. Stuff like that. So that's not that little theming. Like you can keep your blue team on identity, your red team on an identity. Um, you can make, big decorations to curate the environment in the room. You have like a big glacier wall and like a night sky over there. The night sky totally did not fall down ever. Um, 
And then all your index can be like layered off the theme. So you can have different people that like the index are gonna come from. So for the eco warriors, you'd have like different people from like the eco warrior organization giving out index. Um, you have like the, the theme, which was kind of like icy penguin, I think. If I remember, if I remember what the what the like the index looked like, it was like blue. Was in theme. I remember that well. I don't really look at it. Not gonna lie. Um, sorry, Zach. <laughs> Um, and then you also have like interactions with the red team, the black team, kind of like help push the theme. So at ICS 2020, um, the red team was the FBI, and one of the things that would happen is they would come and arrest teams, and like they would just make you leave your computer, and you'd have to like you'd be marched out into the hallway, kind of interrogated. Um, There's a couple of good pictures of like Bill and I just like sticking it to some red teamer, kind of like ask like like yelling about our rights being violated. It was, it was a beautiful time. Um, with IST 2021, the game was like the theme was ninjas versus samurais. And so the Brad and Fred built out this beautiful game that you would have simulated battles and you would like buy troops and you would get points and like uh, other things through uptime. And if you had enough troops, you could go take on other like provinces within like the map, which was the map of Japan. So it was like really relevant to the team. It was like really cool. People actually loved the game. And Red Team did a little live, like pen testing and game breaking during the competition. Uh, okay. <laughs> Someone recompiling the score during the competition. Mm -hmm. So all of these things really helped push the team. So that's all I have about the administrative side of being uh, running a competition. Do you have any questions? Okay, I, I like a quiz now. Chris, what'd you learn? Everything. All right, it's great. Anthony. How, how, is there any way to like prepare for like, oh, that cool game went wrong? Is that just... I mean, your, your preparation for that comes by like building a good team that can be flexible and adapt to that situation. So, Having people who are dependable and can like spend spend some time like solving that problem and not like be thrown off the game by it is kind of how you prepare for that. Um, I mean, if we could fix all the problems before they happen, who would have fixed them, right? So that's yeah. Other questions? All right, Casey, what'd you learn? I learned that there's a lot more that goes into Hmm. Yes, Jay. Because the stack is already dockerized, and I think actually, actually, that's kind of a silly question. Like, why would you dockerize Windows Server AD? <laughs> think about that one for a second. <laughs> the answer there is uh, there is no Windows AD dock container. Um. So yeah. Cuber. Other other questions? That is terrible. No, terrible. I just don't think that even means you, Bert. All right. Um, well, hopefully you guys learned some good stuff. Um, this slide deck will get posted. Same with the presentation. Um, and there, I will be in another presentation about the technical stuff that we did, talking about all the problems that we had and how we solved them, and also like. How Packer works, how we've got our images, the Fairphone works, and Ansible, and all this good, juicy technical stuff. So, hope that part one was as good. And I'll see you all next semester.